Da -da -da. What's good, we're guys, Matt McCoy, country song teacher. I hope you're doing well, guys, doing big things in your life. I wanna to try to keep this video super simple and talk to the beginner who's struggling. You see the chords of a song, but you're like, man, I just can't change them fast enough. This video is for you. The first thing I would, I would tell you to work on is a drill of just doing the chord, maybe for example, a G chord, the two bottom strings of your third fret, fifth and sixth. Do down, down. Then just come bring your hand, grip the strings, down, up, down, up. Then go back to it. Down, 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 up, down, up. Down, 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 up, down, up. Down, 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 up, down, up. Down, down. And all you're doing is working, getting that muscle memory, getting your mind prepared and your hands to go straight to a chord as fast as you can and get it sounding as clear as possible. Now, I'll go, I'll go ahead and say this. If you're a beginner, you're probably going to do this. You'll go to your chord and it's going to go... Hear those dead strings? It's gonna sound a little rough, that's okay. Just push through that. Sometimes you have to push through something and get to this level for this level over here to sound good. So you're going G, G, down, up, down, up. G, G, down, up, down, up. And then you might go to your next chord, maybe a C at nine. C, C, down, up, down, up. C, C, down, up, down. G, G, down, up, down, up. G, G, down, up, down. D, D, down, up, down, up. D, D. All you're doing is working going straight to that chord and back and forth. So that's the first rule I would work on is take about five to 10 chords. I would go G, C, D, E minor, A minor, E, A, and maybe I can even a B chord. Just kind of these track chords. So we'll talk about track chords in a second. But it'll take you, like I said, five to 10 chords and just work on maybe a two or four count. One, two, three. gonna stand on that rhythm like that so instead of just going try to work on even if you're going slow a steady pattern and rhythm the number one advice I can give you is music about is about rhythm and a timing so it's And all you're doing, you're teaching that brain just that pattern recognition over and over. And I, I would say, people always ask me about how to practice guitar. What helps me is doing shorter practice sessions. So instead of going in there and grabbing that guitar 15 or 20 minutes, you get frustrated. Have your guitar out of the case. I always do that. Have it sitting up. This is a close KLOS carbon fiber guitar. People always ask me about this, by the way. I love this guitar. I keep it up here in my farm. So get where you do short practice sessions. Maybe you might do a little routine, for a set of 10 or something like that, like you would weightlifting. Set it down, go do something, come back up, grab it, and all you're doing is teaching that muscle memory. So that's the first thing I would do is work on going to a straight chord and just getting that repetition over and over. The second thing I would work on to get clear, smoother chords is try to find a pivot point within the chord range you're playing. For example, if you know me, most of my videos, I use four chords, G, C, E minor, and D. I know a few more than those, but let's just say those four chords. So I'm locking in the two bottom strings, and basically on these, I'm gonna have the pinky finger on the bottom string, ring finger on the second string of the third fret, for G, fifth and sixth. For C, just moving the top two fingers down, bottom five. E minor, you can do two fingers on the fifth and fourth, or you can do one finger, but make sure you stay at the second fret, all six, and the D. So. so all you're doing now is you're pivoting on two strings. This is going to, uh, this is what I teach in my beginner guitar course. This locks in that guitar to stabilize things. So instead of all this fingers in and out and spread and up and down the neck, you're keeping your, your pivot point. You're locking in those two bottom strings to make the transitions real easy. This is what I'm teaching my kids. I got three little boys. This is what I'm teaching them. When you just learn this right here, it makes such a difference. If you have other chord sets, maybe, for example, you're locking in and your pivot point is just that second string of the third fret. For example, a regular D chord is third and bottom of the second fret and ring finger of the second. So, 
So for example, if I'm gonna leave a pivot point with this one string, the second string, third fret, I'll go D. For an A chord, the way I play it, I leave the ring finger there, I press the two middle strings of the third, from the bottom five. Then I'm gonna lock in the two bottom strings to go to a G. So D, A, G, A, D, So that's a great exercise. Like I said, if, you, if the chord involves a D, a and G. You're trying to find you don't what what you want what you don't want to do is get where every time you're playing a G, take all your fingers off, go to a D, all your fingers off, go to an A, all your fingers off. You want to try to find and get where what is something I can keep on the guitar or close to the guitar to make that next chord easier to get to. So like I said, a lot of times G. So maybe I'm going G to D. I might just keep that going back and forth that first finger or C to D. That kind of thing. So, and sometimes what you'll do is, for example, let's say you're going from an E to a D. So an E chord is third, fifth, and fourth. Strum off six. You're going to slide that finger down to the second fret and then bring these down in that D. A. Slide E. So see, I did. I just slid down. So again, anytime you can avoid taking all your fingers off, you're gonna be faster for that chord change. Because chord changes, and, and the, the the number one thing beginners are gonna struggle with is understanding strumming is about a rhythm and a timing. It's gonna go. You're gonna sound like that. It's gonna sound so choppy and not sound like a song. And you're not gonna be good enough or fast enough to go play a song. So strumming's gonna be your number one challenge. After that, it's gonna be getting to the chord fast enough when you need to be there. Last little thing I always say that make sure once you get the chords down, you can kind of get the timing down. Work on as you strum, taking that first finger on and off. Because it's going to make your chords sound clearer a little bit better. So, hope some of these tips help you guys. Like I said, anytime I got to think of something, I was up here doing some firewood. I like to shoot a little video and hope it can be a blessing. I try to always say I want to be a channel of God's blessings, not a reservoir. So I try to help you guys out. If you're totally new to guitar, you know someone wanting to learn, please go get my beginner guitar course. If you've been playing a while and you still struggle with strumming, that kind of thing, get the strumming course. Those are way people ask me all the time, what's the difference in those? Those are very more a lot more zoomed in, less in format, and a lot slower. I kind of run th through things pretty fast on YouTube, but my courses are a little bit slower and more methodical. Like I said, to make it easier for a beginner to follow along. So thank you guys. Check out the website, countrysongteacher.com. All one word, countrysongteacher.com. And always, when you see my videos, hit the like button. That's what helps YouTube push the, push the agenda and lets me do what I love being a YouTuber. See you guys tomorrow. God bless you.